Welcome to the John Muir Weight Loss Surgery Nutrition Information Video Sessions. Hi, my name is Angie Matke, and I'm one of the registered dietitians at the John Muir Weight Loss Surgery Program. Our presentations will walk you through all of the weight loss surgery nutrition guidelines to assist you in your journey and to promote a successful weight loss surgery. Our video presentations are broken down into three main videos. Video one will address your pre-surgery needs and how to modify your diet and lifestyle for optimal surgery outcomes. In video two, we will address the diet progression and nutrition after surgery. And finally, in video three, we will review vitamin and mineral needs. Each video is equally important in hopes of providing you with the best possible surgery experience. It is important to remember that all surgeries are only a tool in achieving weight loss goals. Adjusting eating behaviors, exercising, and making other healthy lifestyle changes are also key components to maximize weight loss and long-term success. It is important that you commit to a lifelong healthy diet and exercise regimen following your surgery to maintain your weight loss. Here are the behaviors you can start working on now to improve your overall success. Number one, to begin, it is important to remember that your stomach and hunger hormones are altered after having a weight loss surgery procedure. It is common to experience a lack of appetite and reduced food intake after having surgery. To prevent nutrient deficiencies, you must eat regularly throughout the day. Weight loss surgery does help reduce your calorie intake, but the goal is to feed your body with protein-rich meals frequently throughout the day to provide you with the right kind of nutrients. Therefore, prior to surgery, it is advised to practice eating on a regular schedule to prepare yourself for this new lifestyle change. Keeping a food log or journal is strongly recommended by your bariatric team to help you stay on track and promote mindfulness. Consider using apps such as MyFitnessPal, LoseIt, or Berrytastic. Number two, mindfulness is a key strategy for food tolerance and weight loss success. Mindfulness includes principles that encourages you to slow down, focus on chewing your foods well, and recognizing what it feels like when your body is hot enough. Mindful eating encourages you to pay attention to your food choices and portions. For the best meal and food tolerance experience, it is recommended to take at least 20 minutes to eat your meal and to chew each bite 15 to 20 times before swallowing. The Hunger Fullness Scale is a practical tool that can be helpful as you work on building awareness and getting in tune with your hunger and fullness cues. It is important to use the Hunger Fullness Scale as a guide rather than feeling the need to follow the numbers perfectly. As you practice tuning in into your body and bringing awareness to your hunger cues, make note of what feelings and sensations seem to correlate with the ravenous starving, the low end of the scale, and which ones seem to signal earlier signs of hunger. For most people, eating experiences feel best when eating occurs somewhere between a three and a four on the scale. While this may not always be possible, eating before you hit that extreme or painful hunger point helps to build back trust with your body. You may also want to practice noticing different levels of fullness. The sensation of fullness varies from person to person. Play around with what comfortable versus slightly over full versus really uncomfortable feel like to you. For most people, when they eat to the point of comfortable fullness, they are generally able to go three to four hours before thoughts of food pop up again and before they get hungry. By using the hunger fullness scale, you can become more in tune with how your body feels when you eat. This practice can ultimately prevent cravings and destroy the rigid eating patterns that often go along with chronic dieting and overeating therefore ensuring a long-term weight loss success. Number three, stay hydrated. The number one reason for readmission into the hospital is dehydration. So it is important to remember to keep water and other calorie-free fluids at your side at all times. Sip consistently throughout the day to stay hydrated. A goal of 64 ounces of fluid per day is recommended. 
It is also advised to avoid items that bring air into the stomach or cause irritation to the new stomach lining, such as carbonated beverages, straws, and caffeine. You will be more sensitive to these items during the initial weeks after surgery, and it is important to avoid until you have more understanding of your personal limitations. Number four, during the first few weeks of surgery, you will be on a modified liquid diet allowing you to eat and drink at the same time. However, once you transition to a solid food diet, it is recommended to avoid drinking and eating at the same time to allow your food to stay in your stomach longer. For those who have had the gastric bypass surgery, eating and drinking separately can prevent an episode of dumping syndrome, a syndrome that is caused by rapid movement of food from your stomach into your intestines, causing symptoms of flushing, nausea, sweating, or shakiness. The recommended strategy is to wait at least 30 minutes after a meal before drinking fluids and for some, stopping fluids 30 minutes before a meal. Number five, practicing portion control can help you track your nutrient intake and promote mindfulness. After having weight loss surgery, you will find the amount of food you are used to eating is different to the amount you can now digest. Start measuring food portions prior to surgery to become familiar with proper portion sizes. Some examples of using portion control are using measuring cups to familiarize yourself with the caloric and protein value of certain foods, using smaller plates to keep portions proportional to what your needs are, and breaking the habit of cleaning your plate. Number six, prioritize protein. After weight loss surgery, your body needs protein to heal and to promote loss of muscle mass. With a reduced stomach and lack of appetite, it is important that that you prioritize protein first to ensure your body receives the right kind of nourishment. It will also help you feel your best. The average weight loss surgery individual needs somewhere around 55 to 70 grams of protein a day. A three ounce portion of meat contains somewhere around 21 grams of protein. If not mindful of your food choices, it would be easy to fall below this range. Protein shakes and powders are often used during the initial phases of the diet to help meet these goals. Around three to four months after surgery, you may be able to meet this protein goal from the diet alone. Number seven, meal planning. Structure and planning are critical to your weight loss success. Think about your day and week. How will you meet your nutrient goals? Some strategies to help you meal plan could include packing a lunch the night before, preparing a shake the night before, keeping shelf-stable items at your desk, such as tuna or protein shakes. Consider bringing a small cooler or insulated bag for transporting food if you are away from home for an extended period. And when eating out, look up the menu ahead of time. Number eight, modify your shopping habits. Restaurants and grocery stores are packed with high-fat, high-carb, high-sugar, and high-salt foods. When you don't plan and prep your meals, it is easy to choose the higher fat, sugar, salty foods. Making a list prior to going to the store can prevent impulse buying and bad food choices. Remember, when you are hungry, you will want to go to comfort foods or buy foods that are likely not going to provide your body with the best. So it is best to go to the store after you have eaten. Usually, Shopping the perimeter of the store will decrease your exposure or purchasing of processed foods or packaged foods and buy only what is needed for your household to help reduce temptations at home. Number nine, follow your vitamin and mineral regimen. After weight loss surgery, your body may not absorb enough of certain vitamins and minerals, specifically iron, vitamin B12, calcium, and vitamin D. In addition, your diet alone will not meet your micronutrient needs. To prevent nutrient deficiencies, you will be required to take vitamins and minerals daily. They will be a part of your life forever. Specific guidelines for vitamins and minerals will be discussed in our third video. Number 10, it is necessary to understand alcohol can interfere with your weight loss surgery success. Alcohol is high in calories and low in nutrients. After having a weight loss surgery procedure, it is important to know that alcohol answers the bloodstream at a rate of three to four times faster than before surgery. 
leading to a faster onset of intoxication. Consult your bariatric team for help if alcohol may be an obstacle for you. Number 11, stay active. Exercise is an important component of any weight management program. Aim for a regular exercise routine, including both cardiovascular and strength training exercises. Start where you can without inducing injuries. After surgery, it may take you about six weeks to fully heal. During this time, follow your surgeon's guidance on exercise. However, once healed and cleared for exercise, aim for regular exercise routine, including both cardio and strength training. Consider using apps to find motivation or hiring a personal trainer for directions and support if needed. Number 12, join a support group. Studies suggest that attending support groups after weight loss surgery improves weight loss and maintenance. Having adequate social and emotional support is crucial for your weight loss success and psychological well-being. Our bariatric team provides bi-monthly support group meetings. Sign up for our free groups by going to the John Muir Health website under Education, then Classes, Screening, and Support Groups, or call 925-674-2416.